Resident Evil Village is a story about what we are willing to do for the ones we love. Ethan Winters would give up everything to save his daughter Rose, but it's also the story of a mother who lost everything and was willing to suffer, kill, and create to get back the one thing that matters most to her in the world. This is the hidden story of Mother Miranda. I've waited so long. But dreams really can come true. Vessel or not, I can't wait to see my true child again. The Mother Miranda that we know from Resident Evil Village is a powerful matriarch that uses her perverse scientific genius to control and contort the world around her. Capcom originally had some very different ideas for the Mother. According to concept art, Mother Miranda wasn't intended originally to be a mother at all, but instead a charismatic cult leader, a man reviving the biblical huckster trope found in the southern United States, possibly even Heisenberg's father, who would turn into a massive dragon form in the final battle. We eventually got to see that beast, but instead it was Lady D's final form in the game. These ideas didn't last long, but even when the idea of Miranda was introduced to the story, early storyboarding suggested she would be more like a modern researcher that had arrived in the village to try and figure out what mutations have done to the populace. What we ended up with, though, the Mother Miranda we know, I think is a whole lot better. The story of Mother Miranda begins over a hundred years ago. In 1919, a Spanish flu ravages the Eastern European countryside and Miranda lost her daughter to the virus. At 10 years old, Eva was everything to Miranda and in a fit of despair, she looked to end her own life from exposure in a nearby cave. Inside that cave, she discovered an entity I'll let Miranda take it from here as she left a note a hundred years later to Eva explaining the situation. My Eva, it's been 100 years since I lost you to the Spanish flu. I was so powerless back then. But now, now I can bring you back to life from the Megami seat. I had to test your new vessel's regenerative abilities. I took her apart and revived her in the Megami seat regulator the giant's chalice. All that is left is to merge her with the Megamycete. The ceremony can finally begin. After I lost you, I was so stricken with grief that I wandered into a cave to die. I so wanted to be with you again. And that's when I found it. The Megamycete. Completely by accident. When I touched the black substance, my mind was overcome with knowledge. The Megamycete breaks down and absorbs the consciousness of those who have perished. I knew that if your consciousness was in there too, then there would be a way to bring you back. I just needed the right vessel. When I returned to the village, I implanted the villagers with mold from the Megamycete. That way I could control them, experiment on them. I have experimented on hundreds of people just to find you the perfect vessel. I even try to increase the efficiency of finding a vessel by creating a parasite I called Kudo. Yet none of my experiments came to fruition. There were some, like Alcina, who were close to being perfect, but most turned into lichens. I was once approached by an organization who said they would assist me. I gave them some of the mold and your DNA but all they created was another defect. Evelyn. Then again, not a complete failure. I learned of Rose thanks to them, and I knew she would be the perfect vessel. There were some interference, but I was able to verify her suitability. Now my research is finally complete. Ava, I have waited too long to see you again. There is a lot to unpack here, but let's start with the Megamycete itself. It contained the consciousness of her dead daughter, and it set Miranda on a path 
to try and revive her. Over the decades, she refined and studied the mold of the megamycete and discovered that by creating a parasite vessel for the mold called a kado, the powers of this mold would be more easily transferred. We discover that during the plague times in the village, Miranda dubbed her new discovery as the Black God. She looked to sacrifice the entire village to this god to possibly bring back Eva, Ultimately, she didn't have the power to do that, so instead, Miranda gained a cult-like following by infecting the villagers, testing their suitability to become Eva's vessel, with some being cured of their ailments thanks to the Kado parasite, and others turning into vicious creatures known as lichens. This gave her the status of mother to the village, and she began to be both revered and feared as something of a god herself. The Kado parasite even became the sigil of the town, the golden rings around it meant to symbolize the sun, space, and eternity, with the four crow's wings representing the four lords. These lords are Miranda's greatest creation. Carrying the bloodlines of the old kings of the region, four people were able to gain great power from the Kadu, but all at a cost. As Miranda ultimately only needed them as a vessel, she destroyed the minds of these lords. Starting with the vampire queen Alcina, adoring Miranda but never measuring up. Moreau the fishman was obsessed with her and wanted her to be his mother, but he could never be her real son with his rampant deformities. Donna the puppet master was traumatized by her at an early age, never recovering from it. And of course Heisenberg, perhaps the most normal creation, despised her for enslaving him and creating a monster. These new lords, unfortunately, weren't powerful enough, so Miranda used them instead to control the village and continue her experiments to possibly find one vessel that would be good enough for Eva. During those long decades, she also met with a young student named Oswell E. Spencer, a man who would go on to create the Umbrella Corporation. She even received a letter from her long-lost student years after their first meeting. Dear Miranda, my deepest apologies for not meeting you in person. I would love nothing more than to visit your quaint village once more. However, I am incredibly busy. Then again, I suppose for an immortal woman such as yourself, you no longer remember this poor, half-dead medical student in the snow. I have always cherished the revelations I came to 15 years ago when I stayed in your village. I was inspired by your research. To think one could transform a human by infecting them with an organism. Positively visionary. I knew that with that knowledge I could achieve my own vision for the next step in human evolution. Even after two world wars and humanity on the cusp of another, my conviction never wavered. I realized, however, through the many nights of intellectual talks you and I shared, that your conviction differed from mine. You hope to bring back a single dead person, while I aim to change the world. Your experiments on the mold would not have aided me in my endeavor to achieve an exponential infection. I thought a virus would be more effective. This is why, my dear, I had to leave you. I still regret never telling you goodbye. My apologies for reminiscing. I actually have news that I thought might please you. I have found the key to evolution, the progenitor, a virus found in Africa. I plan to start a company with friends and colleagues dedicated to the virus research. I will call it Umbrella, just like the symbol in the cave that we spoke about. I am one step closer to making my vision a reality. I hope you'll be able to achieve your goal someday too. You taught me so much and for that I will forever be in your debt. Sincerely, your lifelong student, Oswell E. Spencer. This means that Miranda, at least tangentially, is responsible for the Umbrella Corporation 
and Resident Evil. At the very least, Spencer did decide to use her sigil of four crow's feathers as the logo that we all associate with the series. To add to these series of revelations, as we heard from Miranda, she is directly responsible for creating Evelyn, the mind-bending mold monster from Resident Evil 7. She worked hand-in-hand -hand with a group known as The Connections to develop Evelyn. She's even seen here in a photo with the child and with Mia, Ethan's wife. Although Evelyn was a failure, Miranda learned about the existence of Rose thanks to her. Rose born from a mold-infected couple, and finally, after a hundred years of searching, she had someone possibly suitable to bring back the soul of her dead daughter. So naturally, Miranda found where Ethan and Mia lived, and she kidnapped Mia, taking her form to get closer to Rose, without Ethan knowing. This is where the events of Resident Evil Village finally begin, with Miranda reading Rose a terrifying story, and we get to see some cracks in her facade. She doesn't have Mia's memories and is short with Ethan when he presses her. If it wasn't for what happened next, Miranda may have taken Rose away that very night. You really have to stop worrying. It's just... Finding you in Louisiana, the pregnancy, Chris moving us here, military training, it all happened so fast, you know? Well, at least we're all together. You, me, Rose. Now, everything's gonna Seriously, be- Seriously, think we can just forget about what happened in Louisiana? It happened so long ago. I just, I don't understand why you are so- <sighs> Mia, get down! Mia! Oh, God! Chris? What the hell? Sorry, Ethan. No! What? Why? If only Chris had made sure Miranda was really dead, Rose and Ethan would be safe. But unfortunately, Miranda faked her death, and as she was on that convoy to a safe location, she reanimated herself, killing those on board and stealing Rose. Now, Ethan, beginning his journey to find Rose, discovers Miranda's village being decimated by those lichen monsters. For Miranda no longer needs the devotion of her flock and has beset upon them a horde, likely so that when they die, their minds would now join the Megamycete, the Black God, and strengthen it. It's also the first time Ethan happens upon a character known as the Hag. Huh? Huh? Wait, wait. In life and in death, we give glory. Uh, hello? You shouldn't be out here. It's not safe. What the hell? Hey, can you hear me? Oh, it's you. The child's father. Child? Hey, wait. Do you mean Rose? Is she here? <laughs> Rose! Rose! Yes. She is in great danger. Since Mother Miranda brought her to the village, we have fallen into darkness. What are you talking about? The monsters? Bell heralds danger. They're coming. <laughs> no, wait. Where's Rose? Who's Mother Miranda? The bell tolls for us all. They're coming again. <laughs> We learn much later in the game that this woman is in fact Miranda in disguise, which begs the question 
Why would she tell Ethan where Rose was? Why does she want Ethan to find her? We don't have an answer for that until much, much later. Ethan continues his journey alongside terrified villagers that are still desperately looking to Miranda for hope and protection. This is also the first moment we get to see Miranda. She's ensuring that no villagers survive this lichen attack. That is how they are rewarded for their years, their decades of devotion, a quick and painful death. We continue our journey seeing the hag once again cackling in glee as all of the remaining villagers are slaughtered before us. Ethan is lost looking for any sign of Rose or Mother Miranda. In his confusion, he is eventually found by the Metal King Heisenberg and taken before Miranda, who passes a sentence on the fate of Ethan Winters. The man is of no real use to anyone else, and my daughters do so love entertaining foreigners. Furthermore, I can show you that you entrust the mortal to house the Majosk. My daughters and I shall deliver to you. Get out of his way, ugly! So I want to see! <laughs> He's awake! Mother, shut the fuck up! What? Where? You mean you'll screw around with him in private? Where's the fun in that? Give him to me, and I'll put on a show that everybody can enjoy. Ugh, so gauche. What do we care for bread and circuses? The man thing's suffering is assured. Yak, yak, as a man's dick is cut off in the castle, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I've heard all your arguments. Some of you were less persuasive than others, but I've made my decision. Heisenberg, the man's fate is in your hands. Mother Miranda, I must protest. Heisenberg is but a child, and his devotion to you is questionable. Give the mortal to me, and I will ensure he is ready. Shut your damn mouth! And don't be a sore loser! You'll find your food somewhere else. Quiet now, child. Adults are talking. I'm the child. You're the one who's arguing with Miranda's decision. You wouldn't know responsibility if it was well Oh, to keep glory! Them. One day your head will actually fit your ego! Fight! 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 Hey, don't fight, I get a say in this? Fight, fight, fight. Silence! My decision is final. Be no argument. Remember from whence you came. Thank you. For new players, this is really the first moment we get to see Miranda as the Crow Queen that she is. Originally, this trial scene had many different iterations. Storyboarding suggested that Miranda, in her true form, would not be present and instead the hag would be the face of Miranda until the end of the game. The biggest cut, perhaps, to the entire Resident Evil Village game, though, would have happened right here. There was the possible inclusion of Ada Wong, a longtime Resident Evil veteran, dressed as a plague doctor, saving Ethan from the monster's clutches. We didn't get to see that now. This does open the possibility, since the modeling seemed to be there, that Ada Wong will be in this series in a possible DLC or the next game. Ultimately, Ethan had to save himself and continue his search for Rose. As he travels in and out between different regions, he once again discovers the hag, who reveals some pretty deliberate spoilers regarding Ethan's origins. We call on thee within the endless. As the midnight moon rises on black wings, we await the light at the end. In life and in death glory to Mother Miranda. Hey, remember me? I almost died up at that castle. Tell me what is going on around here. How can a man be almost dead? That's a question for the wise. You know what I mean. And I still haven't found Rose. Where did Mother Miranda take her? <laughs> You're too late! Or maybe almost too late. The child will be sacrificed, life for life. What kind of sick medieval shit is this? She's just a baby. The crests of the four bloodlines may open the path you seek. Will you please stop talking in riddles? I just want to find my daughter. It's only a riddle if you don't know the answer. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
Wait a second. That looks familiar. Hey! Hey, wait! When Miranda laughed at the notion of Ethan being almost dead, I think she revealed her hand here. I asked the question previously, why have this hag push Ethan forward, making him go up against her created lords and get closer and closer to Rose? It's the same reason she crystallized Rose and separated her into four flasks. She knows that Ethan is not what he seems. She is attuned to the mold and the megamycede, and she wants to know what Ethan truly is and what powers he may possess, if only to better understand Rose, but also to possibly use Ethan as a tool, as she has with almost every human being she has met in the last 100 years. We don't see Miranda again for a majority of the game until we've defeated Heisenberg and we have all of those flasks. She appears, revealing the fate of Rose and killing our hero Ethan. I heard explosions. What the hell happened? I dealt with Heisenberg. Now I'm gonna find Miranda and get Rose back. Not without me. It's too dangerous. Wait there, you hear me? Ethan? Rose? Ethan! Ethan, respond! Mia? A child. She's so important, isn't she? She's everything to me. <laughs> And mine to me. With Heisenberg gone, you've lost your lead. What are you going to do? I don't know, but I'm saving Rose. You'd never know, do you? Even when I took Mia's place in your home. Poor Ethan. Who are you? Where's Rose? <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Remember Evelyn and her power over them all? Rose is her successor. No. Rose is Evelyn's true, complete form. She will grow to fully control the masses. And I must have her. Fuck you, you crazy bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Calm yourself. Rose will be saved. The Mega My Seat catalogs all of us. However, she will be reborn as my daughter. She's my child, not yours. Where are you? Show yourself! Why did Rose come to be? Was it because of her parents? And you are truly a special. But I've learned all I can from you. Your worth as a lab rat has run out. Miranda! You coward! Come out and face me! Don't worry. Your death will come quick. You will join the Mega My Seeds records. I will make sure to sample your blood for later. Once dawn breaks, the ceremony will be complete, and I will become her true mother, bound for eternity in blood. <laughs> I've waited so long, but dreams really can. I can't wait to see my true child again. This troubling scene confirms that Miranda understands Ethan has something special about him, that the Crow Queen wanted to use him for her own gains. She also revealed that Rose is made of the mold thanks to her lineage and would have power over it en masse even greater than Evelyn. There's another key piece of information here. Miranda says that Rose and Ethan, when they die, would be joining the consciousness of the Megamycete. 
This has huge implications on where this story could be going following the dramatic conclusion of the game and possibly saving the minds of some of our favorite characters. It's also clear that even if Miranda had some idea of Ethan's special body, she wasn't aware of exactly how special he really is. After she kills Ethan, we learn that Ethan actually died three years ago at the hands of Jack Baker and was reborn thanks to the mold. He held that rot within him and created a child with Mia, who we also found out is alive and well. This power that Ethan has always had allows him to reconstitute himself and face Miranda for that last time, leaving us with the final confrontation between Ethan, Miranda, and Chris and his team helping out from afar. Ah, little Ava, my beautiful daughter. Come to me. Is that you? Oh, how I've missed you! What? My power is leaving me! Rose! <laughs> Miranda! Interesting. Your body certainly isn't normal. Give Rose to me. Now! You will see. Once I kill you properly, everything. Get her now! Let go! I've spent a lifetime creating this moment. And you try to take it away from me. I will take what is due. My desires will be fulfilled. No. Rose is mine! What the fuck? You fulfilled your purpose, Mr. Winters. You disposed of my false children and awakened the glorious things. Now, please do not worry for little Rose. I assure you I'll provide her with a You understand the love of a parent and a child? How can you deny me? Why the hell can't you realize Rose is my goddamn kid, not yours? Seat saved me from the pits of despair. It granted me this. Bended power. Yeah, right. All it's done is drive you nuts. Now, Mr. Winters, I think it's time you left things in my hands. Oh, yes. The hell I will! Die, 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 die! If I combine Rose with a Megamycete, my daughter will be made manifest at last! I've waited a century, a century, all for this day! Why do you interfere? Surely you have no need for now, so close to death! She's my goddamn daughter! I'm a psycho! I've never seen a human live without his heart. Are you sure you're not? Ah! The those four children, they could do nothing to assuage my years of loneliness. Ever think the problem might be you, Miranda? You're not capable Ooh. of real love. Die, 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 die. <sighs> to ensure I never see you.
And with that final scream, Miranda yells for the soul of her daughter and her story is at an end. This is a mother that would destroy the world to bring back the one she loved and she never got that opportunity. There is a very interesting point, I think, to consider here, looking back on her story. Everything did go according to Miranda's plan, except for, of course, being shot by Chris at the beginning. She got Rose, she was able to use the Megamycete ritual to reconstitute her and set her up to be a vessel for Eva. But instead, Rose was powerful enough to actually siphon off some of that energy and leave Miranda vulnerable, helping Ethan destroy her. If she had known how powerful Ethan really was, would she have done the same thing? Was that Miranda's greatest weakness, not understanding the real power that Ethan possessed? All of this questioning and confusion leads me to my final explained video in the Resident Evil Village series, Rose, the child that now would be queen, and how her journey could map out the rest of the Resident Evil franchise.